There's a bump here. Whoa. You ready, guys? You're going to watch this. It's going to be amazing. Me and Louis Theroux are both from northwest London, and our local park is Ramwood Park. Hello, hello. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Great to meet you. Louis. Uh, Francis. You picked the right day for it. Yeah, I'd love to introduce you to um, some scooting, if that's all right. Of course. Because um, it, it's my secondary form of transport um, after using the train. And I find that um, when talking while scooting, it can kind of help uh, sort of walls to kind of come down sometimes. Oh, nice. And also it makes it easier for me to chat sometimes. Yeah, and it's fun too, isn't it? Um, nice. This, this park as well for me is is a big part of my childhood. Is it? I used to live um, uh, five minutes from here. Um, oh, well, I was reading that online. Yeah. We're both local. Yeah, isn't yeah. that crazy? Um, Halston Massive. Exactly. In well, fact, look at me. I think I remember you. <laughs> Were you down the Asda in 2009? The, uh, well, I was often at Wilston Junction. I don't feel 100% stable. God forbid anything should happen to me. I hope you've got good insurance. Yeah. I love that, but it's very up the nose. That's probably a better shot. Yeah. Okay, so show me what you can do. Oh! Nice. The camera inadvertently smashed me in the head. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> so, this is, I'm going to give you your um, version of what I have. All right. And the straps go behind. Yeah. You want to how, pinch your how, do, how does that feel? It's I, good, but what you, that's, like, that's what you don't want to bang yourself, do you? No. Health and safety. Can, does yours do that? Yeah, but I've tightened up the top a little bit. If, do you, would you like me to do the same Maybe for you? Maybe a little bit. It feels very bouncy. Have you ever filmed something yourself? Yeah, I have. Yeah, but not often, and it always goes wrong. I did a film about hunting, and it, they used to hide in these tiny little hides. Yeah. And it was so small that we couldn't fit um, anyone else in. Yeah. So I went in with the camera and fucked it up, basically. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, the good thing about GoPros is you can't really fuck it up because it's so easy to use. Yeah. Unless you smudge the lens. Um, but as there are lots of water droplets already, yeah. it's a bit of a lost cause. Shall we uh, get scooting? Please. Are you ever conscious of switching le legs? Woo! Switching legs. Uh, yes. So you don't want to have one huge muscly leg and one tiny skinny leg. Should we call out the state of the pavement here? Yeah. It's not good, is it? Not this is a nightmare scenario. I think when we go into the park, it's going to become a lot nicer. This is like smooth butter. This is the dream scenario. Exactly. I used to come here when I was younger to scoot around. And coming back here with Louis really makes me feel like I'm five years old again. There used to be, I don't know if it's still there, a little budgie. Yeah. There's like a bird's house. Yeah, I was about to say. I, I don't, should we we go should and, have a look, yeah. There's a bird's house and it's this way, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's sweet. I hope they're all right in there. Yeah. We put a parrot on TV. We did an episode of this interview series with Dame Judi Dench. Yeah. And there was one where she, she, she's talking about her parrot and there were a few complaints from people saying, parrots shouldn't be kept in cages. Yeah. So I don't know if some people might see this and think, well, they don't want to be in there. It's a real dilemma. My girlfriend loves animals. And when she sees things like this, she just wants to set them free, but at the same time, she loves to, to see them and, and appreciate them for what, what they're like. Yeah. Um, Have you seen the flocks of, um, I don't know if they're parakeets, some tropical bird that are all over Northwest London? Yeah, parakeets. Yeah. Have you seen them? Yeah. There's, there's, and there's thousands of them. Yeah. And sometimes you look out and you think, am I dreaming this? Because a, a, a mass of, a, is, are they yellow? Greeny. greeny, greeny birds, and then you just fly by. Like, wait, what was that? And there's various myths about where they came from. Yeah. But you know about memory palaces. 
which is how people remember things by imagining a house and putting people in different houses. Yeah. They were thinking of turning it into a mushroom farm. Right, uh, that's a great idea. Should we put the scooters down then? So then I'll take my... I felt like this was a good time to stop and chat whilst admiring the view of Wembley Arch. Yeah, it's quite waggly. I don't know why it's... <laughs> it's sort of <laughs> dropped down. So this, um... This whole thing's like really quite new to me, sort of, um, like leading conversations and uh, like interviewing, really. How how do you um, how do you think I'm doing? I think you're doing excellently. And and uh, by the way, like when I started in TV, I felt completely unqualified and thought I was the opposite of what you were supposed to be as an interviewer because right. I, I was conscious of not looking particularly presentable, um, not feeling especially polished, feeling awkward a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and I thought, well, I'm not one of, you know, when you see people on TV interviewers, most of the time they look, they look very professional, don't they? <laughs> and, but it, I, what I came to realize was that maybe that was an asset. So I think for you, what you have is, from what I can tell, is, um, you, you know, what's the qualities that make you unusual are, I think, really, are really a strength. Oh, you know? thank you. I you and I feel like from watching your stuff, I feel like I can, I can connect to kind of who you are in these situations. Oh, that's that you've nice been to hear in. that. Yeah. Um, and I think when you have someone who's very sort of firm and official and very polished, yeah, there's you don't get that sense of relatability. What happens if we do that? <laughs> Does that, does that mess up the whole system? Uh, well, it, it, we could in, introduce a mini game of who can yeah. destroy the other's GoPro first. Camera fencing. Um, but I, I, it would be a shame to wreck one. <laughs> uh, so, with your, your, the new interviews that you've been doing recently, it's uh, slightly different from the documentary yeah. stuff that you've done before. What, what sort of brought you to do, do these interviews? Uh, well, I'd been doing interviews for a podcast in lockdown yeah because i couldn't travel i had to cancel all my plans and that was it came out as grounded on bbc sounds and then i yeah. thought well maybe i should you know i've got kids maybe i should be traveling a bit less so even after lockdown i thought well maybe we could do something a bit similar to that on tv yeah just sort of not having to spend three weeks on location away from the family but spending a few days often around the UK just getting to know someone who I find interesting and then we did Young Blood, and then after Bear Grylls it's Catherine Ryan the comedian and yeah. then Rita Ora and what, what I really uh, admired is the one thing you did where you were uh, doing, pushing up the weights I was lifting weights yeah. with, with Bear Grylls yeah. and that's a good example of I'm not really it's not really an interview technique. I just saw the weights. I thought that would be fun to see if I can lift it up. Yeah. And then it turned out I could just about get it to here. And then I couldn't get it over my yeah. head. And then Bear came over and helped me. But in a weird way, it felt like oddly revealing of, of Bear. You could see like him just sort of eyeing me from behind and figuring out whether he should help and when he should help. And also it's just fun. It's a bit maybe like you and trains like you just follow what goes on and you just observe and everything that's preoccupying or worrying you floats away. Yeah. And you're just involved in, you're just immersed in the experience of being somewhere and seeing what's happening. I think that's why they're so watchable yeah. because it's just in the zone. Yeah. Did you hear that train? Yeah, that's a class 378. Where do you think it's going? Uh, that's London Overground. Is it? So, can I ask you something? Yeah. So you, you, you're known as Francis, yeah. but the crew's been calling you Luke. Yeah. And if I looked you up and your given name is Luke. Yeah. So what's that all about? So through my experience at school, I knew that you know, train, the perception of train spotting at the time wasn't that it, that it was cool. Yeah. And I'd never showed my friends that side of me. Ooh. So in using a pseudonym. You're a secret train spotter. <laughs> Well, when I was younger, 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 not really, but when I went through school, not, I was, it was a deeper part of my identity. Um, so actually, in using a pseudonym, Francis Bourgeois, I, I just, I had, I was able to, to feel a bit more protected. 
and that's why I just had the I just let it go like, like let let these videos go. And so then which one should I call you? Well, I think uh, as as people watching the video know me as Francis, probably Francis. Yeah. But when people um, say, "Oh, isn't your name Luke?" It has it has sort of uh, people online have see, seen that my name's actually Luke and sort of thought that I'm sort of co constructing this whole character who loves trains. But I've you know I've just loved trains all my life and I'm making train videos. Francis Bourgeois is a bit <laughs> has a bit more of a ring to it than uh, Luke Nicholson. <laughs> Luke Nicholson <laughs> has a ring as well. So for me, an integral part of scooting is uh, being able to do a few stunts here and there. But I'm going to do something called a tail whip. Just need to find a nice bit of ground. All right. Whoa! You ready, guys? You're going to watch this. It's going to be amazing. Are you ready? Here it comes. Bunny hop. There you go. That. That was a uh, that was a clean bunny hop. The bunny hop king. Who knew? Goodness me. The last time I scooted down here, I crashed to the dismay of my mum. I haven't scooted oh, down here since. I've got shivery kneecaps. Shivery kneecaps. I love that group. They were big in the nineties. <laughs> I'd quite like to scoot down the hill with you, if that's yeah. okay. Do you think? I'd like be happy to. I kind of want to make this into a little bit of a race. Okay. Um, and I'm going to give you a, a two to three second head start. Okay. All right. Ready? Okay. Ready? Three, Here goes. Two, one, go. Okay, so Louis won. It was a good result. I'm just happy that the world could see what I had in the tank. Now to Wilston Junction, then. Okay. Um, so are we gonna go? Are we gonna keep scooting or? Yeah, if that's all right with that's you. Fine. But perhaps I have a little bit of a tradition with my girlfriend when it's autumn that we have to catch at least one leaf. Okay. Um, I thought maybe was, as we're walking down there, we could try and catch a leaf. Yeah, or yeah, something. that's a good idea. Yes. You on? Did you see that? Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Ah, there you go. Well, I'm glad we we, we caught two leaves. It wasn't looking good for a second, and then we. And then we got it. The McVitie's factory is still quite local, and you can smell that some days. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it smells quite, quite That's nice. That's all right. That smells quite nice. Ultimately, a human can only be so efficient. So, you know, robotics and automation are going to creep in in one way or another. Right. This is good, smooth scooting. Louis rocketing ahead. Yeah, there's no walk sign here. You just have to sort of wing it. Here we go. It's a class 350. Were you waving at someone? Yeah, I tried to. Sometimes they give tones. So a driver might see me and go, doo -doo, or a combination of that. Which is saying hello? Yeah. I have like an emotional connection with these trains. Um, and also, they make me feel good. But I'd really like to show you something, Louis. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna. So, I'm. Uh, th this is the actual um, seat material from. <gasps> right. The, 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 from the old the upholstery old... on the. Which trains was it on? Uh, X district district line. And it matches your scarf. And, uh, and your socks. Wow. 
So, I, I, I heard that you like train timetables. Well, I do. It's not, I wouldn't call it a hobby, but I would say I get a little bit of pleasure out of planning a journey and yeah. figuring out having a, uh, a connection that, you know, is, is not too big and not too small. You know, those yeah. little aspects of how you become part of the process of, of, of travel and, and, and relating to the trains. Uh, but what I want to show you is, is, my, is my book on um, the diesel and electric loco register. And this lists every single locomotive in the UK. Wow. Unfortunately, my orange juice exploded recently and it's like made it a bit sticky. But I think from like the tamed train timetable perspective yeah. of things <clears throat> lining up. Um, wow, look at that. So these are the... Sorry, it's really gross, but um, I need to get a new one. Can I hold it? Of course. Does this have every train there's ever been in the UK? Yeah. Going Not back 150 years. 20, 0, 20, 1992, just after the Second World War. What do they mean then? So, 20021 was scrapped at MT Metals in Glasgow. 20,000 locomotives, maximised passenger capacity. Oh. Was it supposed to? 7 to 5 miles an hour. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is where it all started for me, and I think uh, this is where we'll, we'll be saying bye to each other today. Well, listen, um, I've really enjoyed it, Francis. I, I thank you for, you know, taking me out, and um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, thank you, Louis. And Take I, my glove off. Give you a proper handshake. Thank yeah. you. And I, I have a present for you as well. You do? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I've uh, I've written a book about my train spotting outings. Have you? Um, Congratulations. In in their kind of complete totality. With, that's for you. That's very kind of you. Thank you. No, no worries. I really appreciate it. No worries. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I waved goodbye to Louis as he boarded the 1203 service and really thought about all the things that he'd taught me. I feel like I've learned a lot from Louis today and will be applying it to future chatting situations. Thanks, Louis. Time for me to go now. Cheerio.